Hey there, everyone. I'm Emily A. Hay, the founder of Hey There Social Media. Welcome to our guest speaker social media video series, where I interview incredible women who are work-life integrators. Work-Life Integration Nation is about living every moment intentionally, bringing together your professional responsibilities and your personal choices into one with synergy. I think of it as a way to design your day, to really design your life. It allows you to be present and fulfilled, not overwhelmed and not lacking focus. So with that, we welcome you to Work-Life Integration Nation. I'm thrilled today to have a guest that is very big in, in my world of who I follow. This is Megan Murphy. Megan Murphy is the content director over at Women's Day Magazine. Welcome so much today, Megan. Hi, thanks for having me. So I, I think the key for me that it was never a decision. There was never a moment where I thought, wow, my life and my work should work in harmony. It's really for me been more like, I'm a person that does things passionately, and if I don't care about what I'm doing, I can't actually do it very well. So I've always chased careers and dreams and jobs that really kind of enabled me to live what I love and somehow make a paycheck possible by virtue of living with passion. Okay, so is, living, is doing what you love advice that you know feels so... Un intangible, but have you lived by yeah, that? I also think that's like super, super cliche. And I never want to be like, do what you love and it'll never feel like work because that is a bunch of crap too. I've been very lucky that if I'm interested in something, I'm able to pursue it with passion and therefore probably have a better result than if I pursued something I didn't give a crap about because I thought I could make a good paycheck. So if I look at the span of my career, I started at teen people when I was a teen. I worked at Cosmopolitan when I was like single in the city. I worked at Self during some of my more self-formative years where I got engaged and married and had my kids. I moved over to good housekeeping, like no coincidence, as I moved to the burbs and had my third kid. So if I really look at my where I've worked and what I've done, it always really absolutely coincided with the moment I was at in my life. And that was because those were the things I cared about. And when I, when you have passion and you have purpose, you're going to do better at whatever it is you're doing. So the second I moved over to Good Housekeeping, like I loved my job itself. I was there nine years. I was the fitness director, the deputy editor, created the self challenge, helped people re like realize their goals. Really, really fun and fulfilling. Loved that job. But when the, the Good Housekeeping job kind of came to me, it was like, you know what? I am about to embark on this next journey. I care about dishwashers. I care about swing sets. I care about um, home hacks. And so I sort of kind of just diverted my energies. And where I diverted my energy is, is where I was able to thrive. Thank you for giving us just a snapshot of your background. One thing I'm hearing so clearly from you, you really bring work-life integration to another level because, again, your work just mirrored what you were living mm -hmm. every day, every phase. Well, that is, and it's kind of amusing because if I look at, like, you know, at Cos when I was at Cosmo Editor, I was dating, and so I cared about dating. I cared about finding a relationship. I cared about those things. When I was at Self, like, I cared about myself. Like I, I cared about living my best life, being the best version of me and finding, I mean, I got to work out for a living. Like I was, you know, I didn't have kids yet. So I was the center of my own universe. So working out, eating healthy, like really taking care of myself and pampering and like self care to the penultimate because I only had me to care about, you know, and then good housekeeping. I had a house to care for. I had a house to keep in order. And then woman's day just been sort of, really, really neat because I got to take over Women's Day as the content director. So I could really kind of make it what I cared about and kind of steer it that way. And for me, I'm in a point in my life where I've kind of remarketed it and rebranded it. And we've really refreshed Women's Day as destination celebration, where our motto is no holiday left behind from Taco Tuesday to Christmas. And we are going to find a reason and find the yay in every day. So now my really, and, and that kind of obviously ties into my book and where I'm at in my life, but where I'm at in my life is that 
There is yay in every day. There is joy even in the darkest moments if you know how to find it. Um, and so that's really kind of been the gift now of working at Women's Day. It's exactly where I'm at in my life. And so I'll probably be good at it because it's what I care about. It's, it's so, again, I think the word authentic is oftentimes really overused, but I'm hearing truly the textbook definition of being authentic in, in your yeah. career path. A hundred percent. You, you mentioned that your your career has incorporated today you're a mom so it's incorporated your family so tell me a couple of things oh, that are going yeah. really well well that's been that that's been incredibly neat for me so my kids I call them team Murphy I think everyone should treat their family like a team um, and during quarantine it was pretty wild like I've always I have a TV background and I've always done a lot of TV the kids have done some things with me but during quarantine we really thrived with our at-home TV segments for the Today Show and Live with Kelly and Ryan and Tamron Hall, where it was like, okay, my husband was the camera person. I tried to pull my own hair and makeup together, and I got the kids involved. We did an Easter segment and a Mother's Day segment. We did backyard fun, um, home hacks, summer fun. And really, they, we became, and Team Murphy, eventually I had to give them a couple of bucks because they're like, we're working, Mom. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. Yes, you deserve you deserve to be paid like an actor at this point because it got ridiculous, ridiculous how much work we were doing as a family. But it was like, I'm home and you're home, and now we're going to do TV segments. So it's really sort of like you know, taking whatever it is you have and, and finding the yay in it and kind of making the best out of it. I love the entrepreneurial lessons you're teaching them, career paths, production. Yeah. I mean, really, that's it's taking, bringing your kids to work to a whole nother level. Well, um, I have to think we taught ourselves. I think my husband and I taught ourselves sound, production. I mean, I produced every, like, full-blown shoots. And my husband, who has got a degree from Stern, and he's a finance guy, is like, filming live TV shows with like a producer in his ear, counting him into Hoda and Jenna. And he's like, oh, how are we? Uh, okay. Okay, Mac. I got, I'm like learning how to rig a rig, like rig a ring light and do all the things. So it's been like, it's been a wild journey. But I think again, the key is it's like, Hey, listen, stay in your day, be where you are and, and do something. And so we figured out how to do work right. from the house. I'm finding so much yay in, in T. Murphy's day. Um, again, the whole fix the plane while flying it, you know, you and your husband yeah. obviously are teaching the kids. You just sometimes have to move forward with all, without all the answers. Exactly. So that sounds like a great, great thing of work-life integration in your household there. Yes. We, we um, yeah, we just make it work. And I, I guess I think part of the thing for me is, is I don't think that hard about making it work. I don't, angst about making it work because I never believe there's one solution. And I think that's sort of the key for people is to think about, okay, what if there's more than one answer and whatever I choose, whatever path I take, is it wrong or right? It's just the path I chose. That speaks right to my heart because I am someone who feels like if I hustle and force it, then I'll get it done. So I feel like I can control what I get done, but it sounds like you're just reminding people there's more than one way to get there. Exactly. Forcing isn't the best way at times. No, there's endless ways to get anything done. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned just being a magazine editor. It's like, okay, if we don't love what we did in November, we'll do it different in December. Like, we can't angst over this. Well, we, you know, we're going to print another magazine next month. Okay. And digital really teaches you. You can just pump out endless content and, you know, you know, change it on the seat, you know, flat by the seat of your pants. So it's like, there's no right way. There's no right answer. There's plenty of right answers. So you can't paralyze yourself and stifle yourself by trying to find that holy grail of answers. Speaking right to my type A soul, Megan, thank you for yeah. that, that permission that there's more than one I think way. the thing is I used to be type A, I think, but you know, as a 45 year old mother of three, who's lived a lot of life, not too worried about like, I'm just not too much. I'm more worried about being than I am with accomplishing but that was hard earned okay that that's so again speaking to you know being present and being intentional mm -hmm. those sound very fluffy but what you just mentioned just makes it so real so i appreciate you yeah. saying it that way yay okay you've given the yay in the day what about challenges of being a work-life integrator mm -hmm. i mean i think that i think one of the biggest challenges especially if you're balancing with um 
and trying to find synergy. Now, I really don't love the word balance, so I think of it as synergy because really the goal is to have it all work like an orchestra. You know, there's the drum section and the violin section. And there's tons of, like, in my orchestra, there's five of us, and we've all got different instruments. And for, for it to, to sound like music, we all need to be playing our part. So it's really about creating this harmony and this synergy amongst the five of us, amongst Team Murphy. I think the key is, is allowing um, everyone to feel appreciated and reminding to add gravy to your gratitude. So it's not really enough to say thank you. I think it's about adding the why um, and the details of the thank you. So I, I kind of call it adding gravy to your gratitude. So it's not like, hey, honey, um, thanks a lot for taking that picture. It's like, you know what, honey? Thank you so much for taking that Instagram picture for me because I am so proud of this turkey that I just made out of crudite. And it really means a lot to me that you had the patience or letting your kids, letting everybody know and feel that you value them and that you are all working together and everyone is appreciated. Because I think especially right now, like how easy is it to get swept on? I did more. Well, I did drop off and pick up and I started the Zoom call and you were on, you were in a meeting, right? It's easy to get resentful. It's easy to feel like I'm doing everything. So I'm hearing the clear challenge of all parties in a family might feel underappreciated and mm -hmm. that takes being grateful and showing gratitude to another level mm -hmm. again of just yeah. making sure that you know, you might gloss over it and appreciate that they took the photo, but taking the time to explain to that person instead of holding it in yeah. is, is really going to come back. Why, that, why something was helpful, how something benefited you, why you're so grateful, right? Like, thanks. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't hit your, your receptors in the same way. Thanks because okay. look at, this is how it made me feel like, you know, like if I say to my husband, thanks for cooking dinner, that's one thing. But if it's like, Thanks for cooking dinner. I don't know how to cook. It's impossible for me to even comprehend putting something on the table. I'm hungry. I need to eat. And I have celiac disease. It's even more challenging for me to find something to eat. And the fact that you take so much time and energy to prepare these healthy, satisfying meals for the whole family really means a lot to me. Plus, if you go the extra mile and provide all that explanation, then there's no misinterpretation of, is this just a snarky, you know, sarcastic, yeah. Yeah. not really. Yeah. Because you know, honestly, like you. in these pandemic times, there's just really no room for snark with your loved ones, right? It's just, there's just like, it's, it's no room for snark. That's fair. So I know your mom was a teacher, and again, I'm a mom with two young school-age children, and we're all doing this virtual school scenario. Any challenges with that? I just have to ask being in pandemic times. So I, I, I cheat it. I'm a cheater. I sent my kids to Catholic school and they go from 7.50 to 3 p.m. It's like a private school. Um, so far, so good. Okay. They wear uniforms. Um, it was never something we had looked into before. It was never something that was really on our radar. But um, it has been a legit godsend. And, um, like, I, I am eternally, eternally grateful that this is working out. But that said, I do, have, I do have some hacks and tips and tricks for people who are at home trying to navigate this hybrid situation. In our town, the public schools, they go for four hours, two days a week, and then the rest is virtual. It is incredibly challenging just to maintain where, who needs to go where, when. I have three kids, 10, 8, 7. Frankly, like I work three jobs. I have a podcast, a book, the magazine, TV. My husband has a full-time job. We were like, we're either going to have to hire a teacher to do drop-off pickups and start Zoom call and monitor homework. Or we're going to have to look into private school. And mm -hmm. private school is actually cheaper. Um, <laughs> well, and the kids were happy. You're so happy. Yeah, you're saying that that was your hack, but yet – I'm sure there's also some concerns. I mean, there's, there's Catholic schools, there's private schools where we are, and just concerns that if something shuts down, you know, you, I'm sure you have some stress of knowing you have to be flexible on a dime. Exactly. You know, and I've, and I've sort of tried to say this to my team. Like, I started my job at Women's Day at the beginning of the pandemic. We've never even met in person. And I'm like, we could just laugh about this and be like, we managed to redesign a magazine, change the logo, and, and reinvent a 130-something-year-old brand from our homes like we can do anything and if you sort of look at those challenges i'm like hey listen if we fail now it's funny right like and we've got a built-in excuse we've got a pandemic so whatever don't overthink it 
right now it's working and I'm very grateful that it's working right now. I think the key for any of us is really routine, establishing a routine, sticking to a routine. You know, even if you don't lose the house, leave the house, dress up to feel up, get dressed, no sweats, curl your hair, make the kids get dressed. This is not a pajama party unless they're doing a virtual spirit week. Like get dressed, brush your teeth, make your bed, make your bed. Don't do your Zoom call in bed. Don't do your homework in bed. Schedule your snack break. Does the teacher say to you, oh, yeah, it's snack, whatever you want? No, that should be scheduled. Movement time should be scheduled. And, yeah, that could be painful for a week or two, but once you get everybody sort of working on a routine, people thrive in that environment. Kids, kids actually crave routine and really, really need it. So I think that's, that's the key for anybody. And then when you sort of get that kind of fatigue of, like, it's not working, change it up. Change the scenery. If everybody was do, had their desks at the dining room table, switch it to the kitchen table. A chain of scen- scenery can sometimes be that little spark that the kids need to be, you know, re-energized. You know, it's, it's simple things like that. And you're taking so much of your real world, you know, work side and bringing it right into the personal life side. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's so exciting to hear that it's not always, you know, a division or a balance. It's there's, there's skills that apply to both. And oh, also absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm a terrible teacher, but I, but I know how to run, I know how to manage employees. So I'm managing my students as if I were managing employees. I think there's also fun things to think about. Like, Grownups have done all of these Zoom calls. Well, what about like what are what's your kids' Zoom background? Can you get the teacher to take pictures of the actual classroom so that their Zoom background or their WebEx background background or whatever they're on is the actual classroom? Maybe you have a white noise machine in the house so it feels, you know, calm and serene and it's like the lawnmower or the mailman ringing the doorbell. You know, those kind of things. You know, and decorating your house like a classroom. I am the biggest proponent of decorations we're in apple season right now okay throw up a little apple decor we made the cutest things in woman's day we took apples hauled them out and made these little cups and little sippers like a little seasonal craft use the apples as a stamper like just kind of those fun moments of like we're not in a preschool classroom but we can still do crafts and have fun and celebrate the season and find ways to break up the monotony and to find joy well, I've worked from home for 10 years and I've always been aware of my physical environment and the, the mood it puts me in, but I feel like so silly that I didn't even think so much about how that also pertains to the children. Oh, and yeah. while I don't have a Pinterest homeschool going on, I own some apples and I can at least do that. Exactly. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too, is I feel like everyone needs to give them permission to not be a walking Pinterest board. Like, Nothing needs to be perfect. Like you do not need to recreate a schoolhouse in your basement. Like you give yourself permission to like, it, it can be anything. It can be a card table and like a box of crayons. You got this. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect and beautiful at all. So no. a lot of that advice you gave literally segues into the last question here, but also, um, you're so busy here, Megan, and I think about women that, you know, they might be thinking, what's a better way for me to integrate my work self and my life self? So you've given some really practical advice for this time. Is there anything else you'd say for women who want to get better at integrating these two aspects? I think, you know, I feel like we all have to kind of, like, if you work on yourself first, right, what makes you happy? What makes you feel energized and alive and fully charged? What is the, the thing that your friends come to you for? I mean, sometimes it's like, I mean, I think a lot of people are reevaluating career right now. And here's the thing, like, what are you good at? What do people come to you for? Like, the reason I wrote my book was because everyone came to me saying, like, hey, you have so much energy. How do you have so much energy? How do I bottle that energy? Well, because I couldn't bottle it, I wrote a book about it. And it's packed with those kind of strategies, tips, and tricks to help anybody access that energy reserve. But maybe people come to you and are like, wow, you have the most beautiful hair or you can really style an office. Like, what is it about you that people come to you for? Do you give the best advice? Like, you know, do you always, are you always in the know on the best restaurants? Like, what is it that people come to you for? And then how could that translate into a possible job skill? 
I think well, yeah. this, that, that, that's really smart to, to give women kind of those parameters to think about themselves because mm -hmm. let's be honest, you have a lot of time to be very introspective during a pandemic. It's mm -hmm. not always uh, productive thinking, but at least to say, hey, what am I interested in? You know, what am I already good at? Mm -hmm. um, and again, just as I asked you, you know, advice for gals possibly considering this at any point, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. Um, but just again, a way to get yourself kind of work. Well, I also think we're sometimes like, our, we're mean to ourselves, we're our own worst critics, it's hard for us to recognize in ourselves what's good about us. And at that point, it's like, can you call your sister? Can you call your best friend? Can you call somebody you trust and be like, what do you value in me? What do you think I'm good at? Like, what's something you would describe, like, describe me to me, like, Tell me about me. You know, my sister would do that very clearly, and I'd be like, oh, you're right. Maybe that's where I, I don't belong in banking. It's too solitary. I hate numbers. I need to be around people. You so know? Like, good. Asking someone to tell me about me. Um, yeah. Thank you, Megan. So real quick, tell us, uh, book, podcast, I know you've got yeah. off the gram. Tell me, tell me where we can yeah. find you. So my book, the, Your Fully Charged Life um, with Penguin Random House, comes out February 23rd. The cover reveal is on Friday, September 18th, and pre-sale starts. So I'm very excited about that. Um, Woman's Day Magazine, the October issue is now on newsstands. It's filled with holiday fun, Halloween fun. Um, I'm really proud of the magazine, and it really is a celebration on every page, and it will leave you feeling joyful and energized. I have a podcast called Off the Gram, um, which really kind of even exploded this weekend. We did a two-part series on the F-Factor diet, which was pretty controversial and yep. um, pretty cool. And we're doing a special live event with Ariana Huffington on October 5th okay. um, to benefit Ronald McDonald House. That is all about managing stress, which I think is going to be a really good live show. If you register for that, there's even a – we send a party box to your house so you can um, go live with us. And what else? Then just regular the TV appearances and things like that, but keeping busy. Keeping it all very busy. So busy. Phenomenal. The, again, very busy gal. Love hearing all the different channels you have with work, everything going on. Thank you for inspiring us today. And again, giving women practical ways to be better work-life integrators. I appreciate yeah. your time, Megan. Thank you.